hello guys so welcome back again to our youtube channel um where we talk of course about relevant issues of the law and how it affects your business ah so today we're going to be talking about a very controversial topic whether or not a memorandum of understanding is binding under law under nigerian law under the law one of the most common documents that business people use and it's very common with invest these investors agri agri tech invest agri agro investors and uh, businessmen entrepreneurs generally one of the common most common documents is the memorandum of understanding so you want to invest money in a forex with a forex trader you want to invest money with some of these agricultural guys and then they tell you oh come and sign an mou memorandum so you need to understand the binding nature or the nature generally of a memorandum of understanding all right now the expectation of most parties when the we when they execute a memorandum of understanding and of course depending on the nature of the business relationship sought to be created is to eventually record the negotiated and agreed terms in a definitive contractual document so as the name implies memorandum of understanding we are having an understanding now that there is going to be a definitive agreement in the future so now i'm not going to be speaking because this is a concept and i'm sure after this discussion we're going to have lots of back and forth arguments and that's the reason why i'm going to be speaking based on authorities based on what the law says i'm not really going to be giving my opinion here i'm going to be telling you what the position of the law according to the decisions of the court is on this uh, matter now first of all looking at the black slot dictionary for the late man which of course is really the um, um, uh, purpose of this uh, recording the black slot dictionary is one of the dictionaries that lawyers and law and judges refer to when they want to know the meaning of anything so according to the black slot dictionary a written statement an mou is a written statement um Detailing the preliminary understanding of parties who plan to enter into a contractual or some other agreement in non committal writing preliminary to a contract. So that's the definition of um, the MOU under the Black's Law Dictionary. Now, let's look at what the Supreme Court has held or what the Supreme Court has to say with respect to the nature of a memorandum of understanding that document you sign everywhere every time according to the supreme court in the case of bps construction an engineering company limited and federal capital territory development authority the supreme court said a memorandum of understanding or letter of intent it is largely called letter of intent in the usa merely sets down in writing what parties intend will eventually form the basis of a formal contract between them thus taking into consideration the element of a valid contract an mou is merely a representation of the intention of the parties subject to the execution of a formal agreement so according to this decision of the supreme court an mou is not binding it is just an intention to enter into a binding formal agreement i will give you another case in the case of star finance and property limited and Nigerian Deposit Insurance Company, this time around, the Court of Appeal described an MOU as a document entered into by contracting parties to declare their intention to contract. So it's an intention to contract and to guide them um, subsequently when they are ready to sign a legally binding document. So according to the learning justices, the content of an MOU served to fix in memory um, the desire of the parties which is to serve as the basis for a future formal contract as it is not the real agreement but a document guiding the future agreement i hope that is clear and its status is something less than a complete contract. this is not me speaking this is the law my lord justices of the court of appeal all right so having regard to the above an MOU is implied, as implied by its name, is a document which reflects the understanding of the parties, which may not necessarily be the final position of the parties. By its nature, in it, it is a preliminary document, really, 
which presupposes a preconceived transaction. So there's something ahead. This is just us recalling our understanding. And therefore can be described as an agreement to agree or an agreement to negotiate in the future. It is non-committal in nature, no commitment really. And the contracting parties will generally not be bound by its terms. All right, so that's basically based on the position. That's what the court has held, and that's the position of the law as it as we speak. Now, um, are there instances where a memorandum of understanding can be binding? There's always an exception to every general rule in law. All right. Now, where the memorandum of understanding contains the elements of a valid contract. And parties based on the understanding or the agreement in the MOU has taken steps that evinces or shows that the, the understanding between them is that they are already bound by a contract. In other words, let's say for example, the, based on the MOU, parties have agreed to supply, one has supplied and the other has refused to pay or one has paid, the other has refused to supply. In that case, the court will look beyond the nomenclature and, and hold that there is already a binding contract because an obligation has been created. So what this means basically is that you can't just come up and say, oh, because the title of the document is an MOU, then someone who has supplied to you and whose items you have used for the benefit of your business is not entitled to payment. So if parties have taken steps, all right, and commitment, and have done things based on the MOU, and there's an obligation on your part that you have to fulfill, then the court will impute in it that it's a binding contract. In the case of Alpha Train and AG Federation, the court said that for a contract to be enforceable, they must be concluded by gain, which has settled all essential conditions. In the, of um, that are necessary to be settled and leaves no vital term or conditions unsettled. So if the MOU contains all the elements of a valid contract, offer, acceptance, consideration, capacity, and intention, and parties have taken steps to change their position and fulfill the obligations, then the court can hold that it's a binding contract. All right? Now, I hope this video has been helpful. Please like, comment, subscribe, and if you have questions, drop it. Thank you very much.